Uh, roll on Christmas, says Mark. Yeah, roll on Christmas. It says no one at all. OK. Well, I say it. Christmas tree drooping, says James. That's, I think that's what Get a plastic well, okay, one. OK, yes, roll on Christmas. Well, let's, why not? let's look forward to Christmas this year. And let's look forward to a whole stack of fabulous confessions, because it might be that over the Christmas period, you know you've done something you really shouldn't have done, and we'd like to hear about it if it's broadcastable and legal. <laughs> yes. It doesn't involve laxatives. Correct. Yes. Uh, or breaking into your neighbour's house. <laughs> Unless they've asked you. Oh, I don't no, know. No, they yeah. haven't. No, they certainly right. haven't. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, so confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. That's where you send in your confession. And then the people's verdict uh, is due on today's, which comes from Sassy. Sassy sets the standard mm. for the first one of the year. Father Simon and the Confessional Collective. Back in the day, I was lucky enough to be offered a position at Sky Television oh. in oh. Isleworth. I was over the moon and excited about my first week. Now, I'm not entirely sure what she's doing here, but Sassy says the position was very basic and involved typing the words in the caption box for what was screening. I was covering maternity leave for a lovely lady called Caroline. So I, I imagine that that means that if you were watching, let's say, Blockbusters... Um, <laughs> yeah, let's on say. The on the screen, uh -huh. it would... Uh, there'd be a caption box which would say blockbuster. Is that okay? Anyway, so anyway, it doesn't really matter. But Sassy was doing a, a kind of a basic job, covering maternity leave for Caroline whilst working at Sky Television. Okay, Asian. okay, fine, we got that. Fine. The team were a joy to work with, and as the weeks went by, I was doing more and more jobs for the team and getting to know people in the studios. It was great. Sky TV on in the offices all day long, and the best stocked Tesco you've ever seen on site. Almost. Anyhow, I digress, says Sassy, because this is not about Tesco. No. So one cold, rainy day, not long after my first week there, I accompanied Caroline to the green room kitchen, which happened to be the nearest place to our office to make a cuppa. I had no idea that we shared this room with the studios. It was a small room, and once inside, there wasn't much space. As we went in, Caroline said hello to someone, and to be honest, being nervous, I didn't really look around too much, didn't look up. Um, she asked this particular person, whoever it is, <clears throat> how filming was going. I said, oh, well, I'm just, I'm just getting on doing my thing. I still didn't look up to see who this person was. I thought I should probably get out of the way, and somehow, and I really can't say this clearly enough for your listeners, somehow the gods and the fairies must have been against me. Maybe my guardian angel must have deserted me and the fates were looking the other way. But for whatever reason, I knocked into this man. Oh, no. Spilling, oh. spilling his hot coffee. Oh, dear. All over him. But particularly... Ouch. Down his trousers. Okay. And specifically... Oh, no. Oh, right. Specifically, right. Yes. his unmentionables. Mm. Yes, we, yes. Oh, no, yeah. we got that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ouch. Here we go, everyone. Ouch, indeed. <laughs> In my young, nervous state, says Sassy, I grabbed a tea towel oh dear. and totally no. flustered... No, 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 no. No, why? Started... No. St Don't... Oh. <laughs> started oh. mopping, dabbing, really, in yeah. short, jabbing movements, uh, yeah. trying to clear up the mess, yeah. like a demented mother would do. Uh-huh. It was then... When I looked at this man's face, it came to me that he was someone well-known. And a slightly familiar face, craggy and reassuring. I stopped my mopping of his unmentionables. Okay. A sentence that I've never oh, no. said <laughs> out loud before. I apologised. He looked stunned and said, That's quite enough of that, thank you, or it's, similar. Yeah. He quickly left the tiny kitchen, making his escape. As he walked away like a cowboy, legs bent outwards like, uh, like a gorilla. Well, hang on, is it a cowboy or is it a gorilla? <laughs> Doubtless smoking a cheroot. Yes. Allowing, he was clearly allowing for maximum aeration of the affected parts. <laughs> <laughs> so glad we're getting all of the description oh. here. So good, wow. yeah. I suspect there's a lot we're not getting. <laughs> yeah. Caroline then looked at me in disbelief and said, Did you not know who that was? Who you spilt coffee over? No, I said, but he looked familiar. Well, she said, it's Barry Norman. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. We went back to our floor, and of course, everyone was told that Barry's dampness was down to, Mar was down to me. 
the top film critic in the country was hosting the show in wet pants and trousers. Oh. But it was shot from the waist up, so yes. he carried on regardless. <laughs> what a top pro, what a top man. Being new, I wondered if that was it and I was going to be asked to leave. Luckily for me, it was forgotten and I think he hid when he saw me coming. When he saw me coming. But I'm sure Barry Norman never forgot what I did. Do you think I might be forgiven? In retrospect, Father Simon, it seems likely that he was given some fresh, dry trousers rather than continue filming with a sock <laughs> patch, but we will never know. I may receive forgiveness, but the memory of that day will never leave me. Barry Norman, who has since left us, of course, uh, I need, I need uh, forgiveness from him, but most importantly, I need forgiveness from your fine listeners. What a great fade I've been practicing over Christmas. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> the I'm art of... So I've smooth. Actually, I've actually got a book, The Art of Crossfading. <laughs> yes, brilliant. Page one. Uh, anyway, Sister Susie, what do you say? It's an uncomfortable... Well, it was uncomfortable for Barry, obviously, but what do you say? A while, Sassy. Mm. It's... A, I'm, I don't know. It's a continuity issue if he got changed, because obviously if he'd done some sort of filming... And he one minute he's pants, in black trousers, next he's in green trousers. <laughs> yeah, hey, presto. He's going to spot it. But I just think you didn't mean to... Maybe... I don't think I can forgive you for going in and dabbing with a tea towel. It's the jabbing. I, I think... Let mm. me just mop that up. Jab, 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 jab. <laughs> You just apologise and move on. That's what you should have done, Sassy. So for that reason, I'm sorry, I can't forgive you. OK. Brother from another gutter. Uh, yes, I mean, they keep these kind of dry trousers on, on hand, don't they, just in case? <laughs> and they? This, oh, I'm sure they do. <laughs> um, I, this, this does remind me of um, a Christmas party at a certain radio station that we won't mention anymore, um, where I managed to, um, well, cover um, Annika Rice's chest in Volivants. And, <laughs> and, you know, and, and trying to cover it up, that was a mistake. Dab, that dab, dab. Dab, 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 definitely don't do that. <laughs> don't um, go so, dab, dab, dab. Um, I am going to forgive because all of us have been there, haven't we? We have. All of us have. What, spilling uh, coffee over famous people's yes, groin? Yes. <laughs> We've. Ish, you know. Mm. Uh, or chest. Anyway, so in your case, uh, people's verdict, please. Do you forgive Sassy, yes or no? On the text 61054, you start your message with Simon and all will be fine. Many moments ago, uh, we had our first confession of the new year in which uh, Barry Norman got a cup full of uh, very hot coffee all over his unmentionables, which was mopped up by <laughs> Sassy, uh, our confessor today, in short jabbing and mopping motions. Anyway, the people's verdict is in, and it's like this. So Sally says that was very funny, and Sassy was probably mortified enough after the jabby dabbing, so no forgiveness needed, but gives forgiveness anyway. Uh, Claire says, forgiven, we've definitely all been there, well, maybe not with celebrities, having flashbacks to spilling drinks on my in-laws, never a good time. And Ray says, forgiven, genuine mistake, and being flustered did the deb dab thing with the tea towel. Matt's confession is also forgiven. Well done, Matt, says Ray. Well done. OK, that's that's very good. And that's your Annika Rice. Oh, yes. can I just... I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for... So very sorry. What was it you did again? It was volivants all over her chest. That's... Yeah. It, it's a whole TV show idea. There you go. If you have a confession, we'd like to hear it. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much indeed for those. Confession time. Thank you very much indeed for sending them in. Today's comes from Grabber. Thanks, Grabber. Oh, there you go. Oh, hello. Heaven. <laughs> a little bit of uh, Tavares <laughs> peeking in there when they weren't <laughs> expected. <laughs> So, uh, if you have a confession, it's confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. That's where you send them. Let's see what we got here. Simon in the Assembled Confessional Collective. Seek forgiveness for a childlike prank that caused consternation, a little pain, trauma and frivolity to some. I think there's a PG on this, maybe borderline 12. Mm. It was the late summer of 2003. The club cricket season was done and dusted. We're all looking forward to the end of season tour to Guernsey. A highlight of the season. Tour organiser was Captain Mark, a former army man who organised everything like a military operation. Manchester Airport, 08.30, check-in. 08.45, breakfast, 9 o'clock, pre-flight drinks. <laughs> you actually don't need those. Flight to Guernsey, 10.30, and so on. It was during the pre-flight drink section that we broke the ice with some of our party who were coming on the tour as guests or friends. One particular individual was Andrew. A tall, thin, humourless individual who it happened was Captain Mark's accountant. Right. He informed us he didn't like flying as he suffered from claustrophobia. However, we reassured him after a few pints of a few pints at nine o'clock in the morning. Goodness me. If Amber Nectar, he'd be all right. So we took off on the flight. GR four four zero out of the dank, slate grey skies of Manchester and headed south. 
The plane was noisy, cramped. It was a turboprop carrying around 40 or 50 passengers. I found myself sitting right at the back of the cabin, directly across the aisle from the only toilet. This I thought was very convenient from a personal perspective, but as the seatbelt signs were switched off, a steady flow of people began to come and relieve themselves, culminating with a, a steady sound of the toilet door slamming and the lock engaging. I realised by this point that any chance of a snooze was out of the question, so I bought a coffee from the very pleasant cabin crew lady, who I think was called Mandy. Anyway, with my coffee came a plastic spatula to stir my drink, and I've often mused about why there is a small bauble on the end of a spatula. It seems so pointless. Anyway, as my curiosity grew, I realised that the bauble was an exact fit in the slot of the toilet door lock a couple of feet to my right, presumably oh, used no. to extract passengers oh, who were unable to extract themselves from the loo. And so the seatbelt signs were illuminated as we approached Guernsey, and the cabin crew lady, called Mandy, quickly cleaned away all the used cups and bottles. It was at this point Andrew decided he could not wait any longer. There's always one. He shuffled up the aisle and stooped his tall frame into the small cubicle and I thought this was my best chance to play a silly game. With Andrew safely ensconced in the toilet, I used my spatula to open the lock from the outside. However, with the reactions of a Western gunslinger, he relocked the door. <laughs> <laughs> but he relocked it with such force that he severed the bauble from the end of the spatula. So that was that, or so I thought. Andrew finished whatever he was doing and attempted to open the door to leave but couldn't as the lock was jammed shut the bauble must have fallen into the lock and jammed the mechanism the cabin crew lady called mandy was alerted and she came striding down the aisle with a i've seen this all before mm -hmm. expression on her face she fumbled in her apron pocket and produced the toilet door release key but try as she might she couldn't shift the lock to the dismay of andrew who was now sounding rather anxious the cabin crew lady, called Mandy, then disappeared to the front of the plane to alert the captain, called Brian. And a few moments later, she and the captain, called Brian, emerged in the aisle. He was a large, rotund man with a white, bushy beard <laughs> and a flank ple peaked cap. Reminded me of Captain Birdseye, to be honest. <laughs> right. Unnecessary detail grabber, yes. but anyway. He tried to open <laughs> the lock with the key, but couldn't. This is at the point that I heard the captain mutter to the cabin crew lady called Mandy that we were now on a, in a holding pattern around Guernsey with not a whole lot of fuel left and under no circumstances could we land with someone marooned in the toilet. <laughs> After failing to open the door with the key, Captain Birdseye produced a Swiss Army type knife from his pocket and selected the longest blade. He slid this between the door and the frame with his right hand whilst holding the frame with his left to try and prise the lock open. You might be ahead wow. of me. He applied so much force that the blade snapped, causing him to gash his own left oh, hand no. with the jagged blade in the process. <laughs> it's the captain in his hand, he's cut. Oh, no. With the captain's left hand now bound in a white handkerchief, we decided to take matters into our own hands. Yes, we did. <laughs> and four of our party managed to separate the door from the frame far enough to release the door and an ashen-faced profusely sweating Andrew, who stumbled out to great applause from the rest of the passengers. The flight managed to land safely in Guernsey. And we were met at the gate by some official-looking people who are apparently air traffic controllers meeting some colleagues on the flight. And I heard them talking about the drama they had witnessed from the control tower. However, Andrew's day wasn't over. At dinner that evening, he was fined £10 by the Tour Fines Committee for behaviour likely to bring ridicule and embarrassment to the Tour. <laughs> Apart from drinking four pints at nine in the morning. So after wow. many years... Uh, so, here goes Grabber. So after many years of self-reflection, mm. I seek forgiveness for the trauma caused to Andrew and hope he can fly with confidence in the future. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the cut... I also need apology... I need to ask forgiveness for the cut on Captain Birdseye's hand and the broken toilet door lock, all the unintended consequences of a coffee cup spatula. Signed, Grabber, head boy and captain of everything. Mm. Well, uh, let's check mm. with Sister Susie, the voice of authority and responsibility on the programme. Uh, well, I'm just disappointed, Grabber, and I'm not surprised Andrew was anxious. The plane toilets are tiny. I wouldn't want to get stuck in one either. So, I'm sorry, I can't forgive you. Yeah, Grabber hasn't behaved very well here, no. I think, but let's see what... Who's, the, 
Who's Hannah flying from... the plane? If the captain's <laughs> at the back with the, with the toilet door, who's flying the plane? That's right. I, I thought we were on pilot. the ground. Well, obviously. <laughs> auto. Well, auto. 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 Put, put it on auto. <laughs> Stick it on auto. I mean, right, no, no one told Just Andrew to this. drink all those drinks, did they? No. no one forced him to drink. So if you drink all the drinks and you need to go to the loo, guess what's going to happen? Uh, doors to manual, everyone. I am going to say forgiven. OK, it's the people's verdict. Do you forgive Grabber, yes or no? On the text 61054, start your message with Simon. You can email simon at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. A time ago, uh, we got a confession away from Grabber about his uh, cricket trip uh, off to Guernsey. Uh, we got the people's verdict in because he was messing around with a spatula with the bauble on the end, yes. spoiling the whole thing. For not just Accountant Andrew, mm -hmm. but also Captain Birdseye, who uh, cut his hand and no one was flying the plane. Correct. Anyway, but apart from that, what else did we get? So, Kirito says, I forgive Grabber as it was an accident. He didn't expect to break the door. What I can't forgive is the tour company. £10 fine to the poor guy trapped in the toilet. Unforgivable. Um, Jonathan Batt in Castle Curry and a frequent visitor to De Guernsey says, Not forgiven. A GR-numbered flight belongs to the States of Guernsey airline, which is owned and funded by the people of Guernsey. Grabber cost them a great deal of money in fuel and the lock. Quite right. And uh, Jerry says, utterly forgiven. I'm Andy. Fly me. OK. I well mean, done. a little bit weak, but uh, we'll, but we'll finish it there. Anyway, so if you have a tale for us, we would love to hear it. It's confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Uh, tomorrow we decide on the winner of the smart speaker. Uh, so that is the allure. Not just get your confession on, but maybe get the smart speaker. Uh, and we'd love to hear from you. I think that's probably right. And therefore, because your bosses have a problem with it, there uh, are bosses, yes. we would all have a problem. Correct. And we all agree well, with them. Well, rescued, that's yes. absolutely for certain. So it's tonight's confession. It's the last of the week. So we're going to be deciding who gets the uh, the smart speaker. Uh, this one comes from Terry and June. Thanks, Terry and June. Father Simon, Matt and Susie, no names to be changed. It was just a little bit of fun. So obviously... We've changed the names. Changed we changed all the, the names. names, yes. It's December 2015. My long-suffering wife... June and I, that's Terry, <laughs> yeah, decided okay. to jump on a train and have a couple of days away. Having endured builders for a couple of months, the small porch and downstairs washroom were now complete. The splash of paint and lights could wait until our return. The plan was simple. Walk to the station, pay a ridiculous amount of money to upgrade to first, and upon arrival at our destination in one of the UK's finest cities, we check into our hotel, then enjoy all that this historical and enchanting city had to offer. And perhaps a spot of lunch on one of the many boats that navigate the river, hmm, on an hourly basis. You know, okay. a, little, a little edit in there. Oh, I see. Right. The plan needed to be timed to uh, the plan needed to be timed to perfection to ensure we gained maximum value from our short break. Yes. Obviously, the ideal location to organise with such military precision is the pub. <laughs> Need so, uh, right. needless to say, of the course. planning took longer than we thought, and when we finally left five hours later, it was completely dark. <laughs> While well, that day seemed to get away from us, mm. my wife June slurred. <laughs> Attractively, <laughs> I'm sure. Anyhow, we, we decided to pop back to our hotel and enjoy the sobering magic of a shower before going to a <laughs> restaurant later. <laughs> the sobering magic of a shower. And that, Father Simon, is when we saw it. As we stumbled through the narrow, decorated streets, we were strangely drawn to a beautiful apparition of a shop. It had a ready break glow, if you remember the old TV. Yes. Band, and these drunken moths were pulled towards it. We wandered into the almost closed shop and stood, mouths agog like small gin-soaked urchins. <laughs> it had more lampshades, chandeliers, bulbs, flickering pretend candles and light fittings than anyone would ever require. The central till in this beautiful old building was operated by a lady in her late 70s and she greeted us with a warm smile and a wave. How lovely. It's connected by a series of corridors, illuminated wonderment at every turn. As we wandered around, my attention was drawn to a strange-looking light bulb, positioned centrally in a large, light-shady thing, that'll be a light shade, presumably, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> in the centre of the ceiling. Attached to it was a handwritten note. The note said, I'm a Bluetooth speaker. Right. Wow. And so it began. 
By now, the lovely lady on the till had started to serve another similarly aged lovely lady. Having secreted ourselves in the standard lamp section, iPhone in hand, I connected to the speaker <laughs> and I started to play Michael Jackson's Thriller, which, as you remember... <laughs> ...sounds a little bit like that. They stared at each other as the echoing footsteps and creaky doors of the track filled the empty shop. <laughs> Did you hear that? said the concerned till lady. Yes, replied the equally worried purchasing lady. They both looked round, neither quite understanding what was going on. I quickly chopped to Ghost Town by the specials. And so that strange sound came out of the speakers. <laughs> Their anxiety seemed to be increasing slightly as my wife June and I <laughs> were crying into our hands. At that point, I decided it was time to lift the mood. And what better way to lift the mood than the dulcet tones of Mr. Buster Blood Vessel? <laughs> so as I cranked up the volume and my giggly partner in crime, my wife June, tried to dance the can-can, Till Lady and her confused customer were joined by a whirlwind of women. Clearly the boss of the shop, she quickly... By a whirlwind of a woman, <laughs> clearly the boss of the shop, she quickly grabbed a stepladder from the back room and switched it off before Buster could entertain any further. It's one of those modern speakers, she barked, whilst folding the ladders and looking with a steely gaze around the shop. Mm. We, fortunately, were hiding behind some extravagant beaded uplighter floor lamps. <coughs> you always need some of those. Yeah. The next day pretty much followed the same plan. Breakfast, plan the day, disregard the plan, go to the pub. In hindsight, we probably shouldn't have returned to the shop. I'm sure they won't have it switched back on. How wrong my wife called June was. <laughs> yeah. A different lady on the tills, so a new victim to entertain. Okay. Sadly, we only got a few bars into... <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> yes. Come on. Just... Oh just a few bars into Back in Black before the boss literally ran full speed into the shop, <laughs> picking up those stepladders again, clicking them open like a seasoned window cleaner while still moving. She was up the rungs and the speaker was terminated as quickly as a flash. She moved like a cat and the cat was on the hunt for the perpetrator. This now went very badly. Let me explain. See, we don't ask forgiveness from the original Till Lady, bless her, nor do we have any remorse for the confused customer. It was no doubt a story she could tell from now on. Sadly, our state of squiffiness, we hadn't noticed, uh, we hadn't done a suitable recce, failed to notice the only other customer in the shop. Uh huh. We are asking forgiveness from the middle aged Japanese tourist, resplendent in his New York Yankees cap and rucksack. I'm confident that as he was texting someone on his phone, he had no idea that Ladder Lady was marching towards him, <laughs> the obvious culprit. Again, showing an incredible ability to multitask, she dragged him backwards by the rucksack, <laughs> opened the door, and at the same time spun him out into the street while lambasting him for being so rude. Don't darken our doors again. Goodness My wife called me. June and I picked him up from the floor because we thought it was the least I could do, and I handed him his cap before brushing him down. We haven't been back to the shop, but I often look at it with a warm feeling inside as we stumble past on our yearly visit. So, hopefully, forgiveness awaits. Have an amazing new year. Uh, say, Terry and June, P.S. <laughs> we love the show. Joyce goes down Aww. very well. Uh, Sister Susie, the voice of authority and responsibility. Oh, Terry and June. Do you know what? I think you were just having a bit of fun. And what I appreciate is that you spent all that time in the pub on the first day organising what you were going to do. Because, you know, we all need a bit of cash in the pubs at the moment. So I think I'm just going to forgive you for that reason alone. Brother from another gutter. I mean, it appears to me they spent this entire weekend either in the pub or in a light bulb <laughs> shop. Yes. I mean, I've had some pretty wild weekends, but uh, never quite uh, hit those heights. Um, I I have to say the production levels on this confession are out of this world. Yes. Well yeah. done. And it is for that reason <laughs> that I choose to forgive. 
Okay, people's forgiveness. Do you forgive Terry and June? On the text, please. 61054. Start your message with Simon. <laughs> um, our confession from Terry and June. They were off on a city break and they spent the whole time in the pub and interfering with a smart speaker in a light bulb shop. <laughs> That's how great their weekend was. The people's verdict is in. Here it so comes. So Fiona says, if, <clears throat> excuse me, if Sister Susie's forgiving them, then you know it's worth forgiving. Uh, Jill uh, says, not forgiven. Who knows what damage was done to Anglo-Japanese relations because of this prank True. could have caused a diplomatic incident laughing lots despite it not being forgiven and joseph says i'm with matt regarding the production values of that confession and the fact that terry and june are forgiven so is that the smart speaker of the week winner because it's about a smart speaker it is so choose that well, well, well we're decide. about to find so, out aren't yes, we well, yes. so you can't just declare it's not down to you you only have one vote you know. i'm not fifa uh, that's right, that's very good. Uh, Tuesday's confession was from Sassy. Barry Norman got the hot, the uh, cup of hot coffee spilled over his unmentionables. Mm -hmm. and then she did some uh, some dabbing. Uh, next up was Grabber's confession yesterday, the tale about the cricket trip to Guernsey. Uh, a few amber pints at nine o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. A broken plane door and an injury to Captain Birdseye. Yes. And you just had our final confession of the week from Terry and June and their Bluetooth speaker, Alcohol and a famous UK city. But who is going to win the smart speaker? Susie, you go first, I think. I did like Terry and June's confession. Terry and June today, the Yes, the smart I did like that one. one. Yes. Okay. However, yes. I think they've probably okay. got a smart speaker because, you know, they know how to use it and all of that. So I think I I think I'm gonna pick Sassy with the because that was so embarrassing that you just she just needs it after after what happened. Yes. Uh, Matthew? <laughs> I'm gonna go for Grabber, the one in the sky. Classic. Who's driving the plane? You can't! <laughs> He tried to lock someone in the toilet. Yes. I'm not there. Classic. I am going to go with uh, Sassy as well. So uh, I'm with Susie. The I Barry Norman. Again. You cup can't of reward coffee. the plain behaviour. No, you absolutely can't do that. <laughs> so Sassy, not your real name. Uh, congratulations. You've won our smart speaker. Yay. And if you fancy it yourself, then send us a confession. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk.